Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Alex Kiriakidis. Uh, I live in Amsterdam, and I'm originally from Greece, as you might notice from my popular accent. Uh, I picked up Vue.js a long time ago. I won the framework was version 0. Point something. And uh, actually, I wrote the first book on Vue.js because I wanted more people to learn about Vue.js because it's so awesome. Uh, the book is called The Majesty of Vue.js, and uh, we have a version available for Vue.js 1, 2, and soon we will publish one for version 3. Uh, after the success of the books, uh, I started Vue School, thank you, uh, where we teach developers through video courses about Vue.js and the ecosystem. And I work as a consultant with a handful of companies uh, on Vue.js, and I have contributed to the framework and the ecosystem throughout the years. You can find me on the all social network under the username of Hootlex. And yeah, you should follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Vue School, our goal is to be the number one learning resource for Vue.js. We have more than 300 video lessons and 70,000 users. And all these amazing people that you see here consist of our teaching team, and they work with us either as teachers, uh, contributors, or reviewers. And please raise your hand if you have learned something from Vue School, either from our video courses or tutorials, talks, uh, or anything. Awesome. I think I see some people, <laughs> but it's very bright here. Um, so besides of workshop, we also do uh, workshops at uh, conferences and in-house for companies. So if you would like to train with us, let me know. And today, I'm going to talk to you about what you will love in Vue 3. But before we look into that, I want to talk a bit about Vue.js as a framework and the current state. So Vue.js is a relatively young framework, but it's very famous. It's being used by thousands of companies worldwide, and uh, including some very big companies like Google, Apple, Adobe, Behance, Nintendo, and many more. And the reason that all these companies decide to use Vue.js in their applications is because Vue.js is so easy to use and learn. Here I have a graph from a, from a case study, the state of JavaScript where Vue.js developers were asked what is their favorite aspect of Vue.js. And as you can see, they have placed the easy learning curve as the first. For reference, I have the same question here to React developers. And notice how they have placed the easy learning curve as third from the bottom. Uh, this is another case study. It's called State of Vue.js. And uh, you can see that the most important reason behind adding Vue.js to the tech stack is because Vue.js is pretty easy to start with. And the biggest advantage is the ease of integration and the great documentation. And uh, of course, all these companies don't use Vue.js just because it's simple. They use it because it's a great, it's a great framework. And uh, it's lightweight, it's performant, and it's very scalable. And uh, if you're familiar with Vue.js, you know that uh, it's option-based. It looks like that. This is a typical Vue component or Vue instance. And this doesn't go anywhere. In Vue 3, we will continue uh, to create our components like this with the options API that we know and uh, love. And now let's talk a bit about Vue 3. Vue 3 is going to be smaller and faster. It comes with some exciting new features. It will expose some lower level APIs while it comes with improved TypeScript support and a more maintainable code base. Vue 3 is currently in alpha, so the syntax and some features and changes might change, and also what I'm going to show you today might change, but uh, it's good to know. Uh, it's going to come out soon, and uh, most of the user code will remain the same, so you will not need to rewrite everything from scratch. And now it's time to talk about what I believe you will love in Vue 3. And uh, the first lovely feature, or change, um, is that there will be no reactivity caveats. And uh, currently, due to the limitations of JavaScript, uh, you cannot uh, detect property addition uh, or deletion. So when you are setting a new array item, adding a new object property, or deleting an object property, you cannot detect this change, and thus it's not reactive. To work around this feature in Vue uh, 2, or the current version, we use the special view set and view delete methods. And uh, here I have some code examples to get you excited and uh, get what these reactivity caveats uh, mean. So you see that in view 2, uh, we, in order to set a new array item, we will use the view set method, um, use the array 
as the first argument, the index where we want to set it as the second, and uh, the new item as the third. Now, in view, in view three, we don't need to do anything special. We will just set uh, the array item to the new value, and you will pick up the change, and it will be reactive out of the box. Accordingly, when adding a new object property, uh, thank you. When adding a new object property, uh, <laughs> you can um, you use the view set, you use the object as the first argument, the property name as the second, and uh, the new value as the third. And in view three again, we don't have to do anything special. We set the object property, and uh, if it doesn't exist, it will be created and it will be reactive. And accordingly, with view delete, um, we delete an object property. And in view three, we just delete the property, and it works. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, we don't need to answer. <laughs> um, another feature that I'm very excited in view three, and this is one of my favorites, is the portals. And the portals allow us to teleport an element in the DOM from one place <laughs> to another. Well, let's play once again. <laughs> Yay. So. Uh, in order to teleport an element, we need a target. Um, and here I have a component to show you where I'm rendering the router view. And right after, I have a div um, with an ID of portal target, um, which is uh, it's not a special element. It's not a component or something new in view 3. It's just an empty div with an ID, which uh, we will use to send elements here from other components through portals. Um, let me show you how this will work. So this is another component. It's a user card. It, uh, it has uh, a title for the username and a button that will remove the user. And within here, uh, I'm using the new portal component that will be saved in view 3, which accepts a target argument with a CSS selector of where to send um, these elements. So whatever elements we place within the portal will be rendered inside the portal target, which can be anything we define in here. In this example, the target will be the div with ID of portal target that we have in our view. And the source is uh, this portal that lives inside the template of user card. And uh, now, no matter where we place the user card in the, in the document, this element will always go within the portal target. So to show you, I have made this example. Uh, here is the user card. It has the name and this button. And here is the router view or the rest contents of the page. And notice in the bottom that we have this element that will be uh, rendered within the target. So you see that the, the template of this component is set on the top and the bottom. And uh, now notice that if I toggle the user card component, both elements go away. So even though the, uh, this element lives in the footer, it actually belongs within the user card component. Uh, <coughs> the portals are very handy when you're working with uh, models, notifications, and pop-ups, and in general, elements that uh, the position in the DOM tree is important. And also, they're handy when you are going to play with some layout content, and uh, imagine that you have the power to add or remove content within a sidebar, a menu, or a footer from any component of your application. Uh, if you get overexcited with the portals and you can't wait to use it, um, there is a great plugin for Vue 2. It's called Portal View. It's made by Thorsten. And uh, you can find it on this, uh, on this URL, and uh, you can add it in your Vue applications. Um, the next lovely change is the multiple root nodes. And um, this sounds a bit uh, complex, but in reality, it's very simple. Uh, let me know if this sounds familiar to anyone. Uh, you create a new component, you put your nice content within the template, and then you go in the browser to see how it looks, only to see this error. The template root requires exactly one root element. So then you have to go back, you create a wrapper element, and you put all the elements within this like wrapper div, span, uh, or whatever. And then you go back, and then it plays. Now, in view 3, this just works. You don't have to do anything. You, you don't need to create any wrapper components or uh, divs anymore. So in view 2, we would have to create a div and place the multiple root nodes here, or nodes. And uh, in view 3, we can have multiple root nodes uh, directly on the template. 
<clears throat> uh, the next lovely change is regarding the vModel API. And the vModel API changes from this to this. So now you might say, why, why the heck would I like that? What's, uh, what's, what's the benefit for me? And uh, the benefit is that uh, this way you can not only have one vModel on your component, not two, but as many as vModels as you like. <laughs> Okay, and now it's time for a serious uh, new feature that is very exciting. And this is no other than the infamous Composition API. Um, the Composition API is a new advanced feature. Uh, it's an addition to the current API, and the Options API is not being deprecated. It's also in RFC status, so the syntax might change, and you should not use it in production just yet. Um, Typically here, uh, I would have a ton of code examples and use cases, but I know that many people have talked about the topic already, so I will just make a quick intro and give you my thoughts on the Composition API. The Composition API is here to help us with the code organization, uh, the logic reuse, and with TypeScript support. And uh, the benefits of the Composition API when compared with other uh, existing patterns um, is that it's extremely flexible, because it is essentially JavaScript functions, they can be stored in individual files, they can be customized uh, with uh, arguments and everything. And uh, when, they, when the Composition API is used to share component options, there is a clear source of properties. So you know where these set data or, or methods are coming from, and there is no magic happening behind the scenes as you would have with mixins. Uh, there's also a performance benefit because there are no component instances involved. And uh, there is no namespace collision as with mixings. Uh, there are some cases where the Composition API is a great fit. And uh, the first one is when the component code grows too long. And uh, how many of you have worked with a component that is more than 1,000 lines? 1,000 lines. Yeah, I see quite so many people. Yeah. So guys, for these use cases, uh, the Composition API will be a blessing because we can split this component into uh, multiple files, and we can split them by, by feature and then bring them uh, all together. Um, the Composition API is also a great fit when there is uh, multiple people that work on the same big components, and uh, when you want to reuse component options without uh, using mixins. And lastly, of course, when TypeScript support is important. Though, as everything in life, the Composition API comes with its own drawbacks, which in my opinion is the overhead of introducing refs, um, the fact that there is no shared template, the same we have with mixins, and the learning curve. And the learning curve for me is the most important because remember in the intro how many people and companies love Vue.js because it's so simple and the learning curve is so smooth. So please consider this and don't go crazy. You don't need to rewrite your Vue 2 application using the Composition API. Uh, you don't need to use the Composition API in a single component, and uh, keep the junior developers in mind. And this is something that I really like in Vue.js today, that you can teach someone that, uh, okay, here is your data, your compute properties, your uh, props, whatever, and then they can build amazing things. They don't need to be experts. But uh, the Composition API is not so friendly to junior developers or uh, backend developers, web designers, and people that are no experts in JavaScript or development in general. And now suspense. <laughs> this is not a joke. Uh, this is a new component in, in Vue.js that uh, renders some fallback content instead of a component until a condition is met. So suspense accepts uh, some slots, and uh, the default slot accepts the component that should be displayed. And while this component performs some asynchronous operations, um, suspense will display the fallback template, which can be a loading indicator or something else. So you don't need to worry uh, which template will be uh, displayed because Suspense will take care of this for you. Now this is a placeholder slide because I think you're going to love the next, uh, the next change. Um, how many of you use Vue.js filters and you really like them? 
Yeah, I only see very few people, and this is great because uh, in Vue 3, filters are removed. Uh, <laughs> so, um, what you would do with, um, with a filter today, um, you would use it in the template using the pipe symbol and the filter name. And the common use case is when you work with a, a currency, for example, you have an amount and you want to display it in dollars. And um, this is not possible in Vue 3 anymore. Um, uh, instead, you would create a method and pass the value as the argument. So the benefit of this is that there is no more dilemma. You don't need to worry if you should make a filter or a method because they do the same thing, because there will be no filters. Um, yeah, what I'm showing you now is the, is the changing, changes that I believe you will love, but uh, there are quite some more changes. Some you might love, some you might hate or not even care. But uh, to mention a few, uh, the global mounting APIs uh, will change, uh, the transparent wrappers will be simpler, uh, the slots will be unified, and uh, quite some more. Let's see some hints. Um, first of all, Vue 3 will not break your applications. Um, so even though you will need to take some time to upgrade your application, you will not need to rewrite everything from scratch. Also, if you are not already using Vue.js in your products or even if you don't know Vue.js, you don't need to wait for Vue 3 in order to use it or learn it, because most of the Surface API will be the same. It will just be better. And if you are still wondering why to upgrade to Vue 3, a quick summary is because uh, you will get uh, massive performance improvements, exceptional reusability possibilities, uh, all these exciting new features, uh, new design patterns for scalability, and TypeScript support. Um, Philip Rakowski and I were working on a course that is called What's New in Vue 3 that we're going to publish in a couple of weeks where we actually cover this and uh, the other features that you might not necessarily love. Um, you can find it here and uh, if you want to get notified when we ship it, you can click this follow button on the site. Did you take a photo? Okay. Um, that's, uh, that's me. Uh, I'm Alex Kriakidis. I do videos and workshops uh, at USchoolIO mostly. Uh, every single one of you should have got a 25 uh, bucks free pass uh, when you arrived in your bag. Uh, if you're not, look around. Um, at USchool, we create uh, courses for beginners, intermediate, and advanced developers. We, we try to have the, uh, as big variety as we can. We have server-side rendering, Next.js, testing, uh, real world cases and many more. And actually with the passes you can get access to all our courses for free, so you can check uh, all our content. Yeah, don't check this secure code is old. So we will be at the booth area in the last break. Um, if you want to come say hi, discuss about uh, training or just grab some stickers, I will be happy to meet you. Thank you. <laughs>